Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Today is... What is today? Is today Wednesday? Wednesday the 10th? I think so. It's a long week. <laughs> We're going to start with a daily reflection on the Book of Mormon. Whoso knocketh to him will he open, and the wise and the learned, and they that are rich, who are puffed up because of their learning and their wisdom and their riches, yea, save they shall come down in the depths of humility, he will not open unto them. Second Nephi chapter 9 verse 42. The Lord's door is always open to the faithful who are pure in thought and action. The faithful may or may not be the learned or the rich. The size of the bank account or degree of education is not what matters before the Lord. He looks on the heart and stands ready to bless, but those are but those who are puffed up with pride because of their money, education, and their supposed wisdom will be closed everlast everlastingly to the Lord's love and light. The apostle Peter, Peter taught <clears throat> be clothed with humility for God resisteth the proud and receive and giveth grace to the humble humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time the things of this world the possessions prestige and position we have will all soon pass away but the things of eternity live forever okay Whoa. All right, today is Jacob chapter 5, verses 31 through 46. Okay, in this, the Lord of the vineyard is tasting the fruit that he's laid up in store. He's pruned, digged the trees, they're bringing forth fruit. He's like, yes, we've worked so hard, they're bringing forth fruit. They gather it in and he starts to taste it, each one. And he's like, it's all bad. None of this is good. Um, he, he's, he's very sad. He's very disappointed that all of it is bad. And, um, let's see. Um, and it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard wept and said unto the servant, What could I have done more for my vineyard? Uh, that's the verse I chose for my long suffering. I finally picked a verse from this chapter. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, it's, I think that's one of the feelings of long suffering. Like, we've talked about um, enduring to the end in joy and, you know, just having patience. But, like, being sad and weeping and like lamenting the loss of something or saying that something is hard is not the opposite of long suffering. I believe it's part of it. You know, we were meant to weep so that we could know the joy. So I don't think that if we break like this, we're not long suffering anymore or we're not patient or, or we're not enduring to the end with joy this is part of it too. Um, so then they decide to work with the trees a little bit more. The, the servant says, well, you know, the wild branches, they, they made the roots thrive again. So let's work with it a little bit more. Okay. We'll work with it a little bit more. We don't need to cut down the whole vineyard. We don't need to cut down the tree. Let's just work a little bit more. So that's where we're at in these verses. Okay. Um, okay, now. To our commentary. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> what could I have done more for my vineyard? The anguish of the Lord of the vineyard as he beholds from time to time the decline of his tree and the lack of good fruit is reflected in the question just cited. The same theme is sounded in the parable from Isaiah. What could I have done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, uh, brought, for, brought it forth wild grapes. The doctrine behind the allegory is the certainty of God's unremitted service on behalf of his children, whose immortality and eternal life constitute his mission and his glory. God will never give up the fight. The forward motion of the plan is inexorable. Despite disappointments and re uh, reversals along the way, Neil A. Maxwell confirms this truth. Prophets have a special appreciation, too, for Jacob's allegory of the olive trees. They can identify with the feelings of the Lord of the vineyard, who, after all his labors, saw much evil fruit come forth. The twice-given lamentation of the Lord of the vineyard was, What could I have done more for my vineyard? We, too, sometimes might feel that our labors are not fully productive when children stray from the path or when our missionary outreach is not welcomed by those whom we try to teach. In such cases, the allegory of Zenus lends comfort and hope to our efforts, since in the broad contours of God's plan for his children— there will be the ultimate harvest of joy and triumph. From our modest position as servants of the Lord, we realize that our efforts will bear fruit if we endure to the end and place our faith in the Lord of the harvest. <sighs> I don't have anything more to say about that. Now, I do have something to say about my own personal life and my own personal long suffering. I've been failing terribly at it. Um, I, uh, at work, I have this team member who tries my patience to the, like, one thing, and I'm just sent into a rage. Like, I am not, I, he, he is the trial. We've talked about this. He is the trial that the Lord has given me, and I've been failing at this trial. Every time I deal with this person, I fail completely and horribly. Yesterday, I found out that he leaves the store to go smoke and vape outside of the store when he's the only one there. He leaves the store unoccupied so that he can go smoke. I lost it. I lost it. Oh. I don't even want to pray to have compassion for him. I don't even want to because but every time I read something about long suffering or being patient or enduring well he comes to mind and I'm like I'm failing so hard I'm failing so hard he tries me he tries me every single day I don't know what to do about it <laughs> I don't know what to say about it, even. I just... I have... Oh, I don't know what to do about him. I guess I just have to pray, even though I don't want to pray, because I know what the outcome will be. If I pray for him, if I pray to love him, if I pray to have compassion towards him, it will develop, and then I won't be able to be angry at him. But sometimes you just want to be angry at him. All right, all right. Let's read a daily reading on prayer. 
and then we'll talk about my plans. Today is day 101. Gerald and Lund, the ultimate expression of humility. The condition of humility and meekness is closely connected to our ability to receive and recognize revelation. It is, of course, the opposite of pride. Okay. As we were just talking about here, I, going along with my plans, I don't, they're not solidifying. I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I don't know if what I'm doing going forward is right. If it's going to work for the next six months, if if what I'm doing is going to be usable for the advent calendars, I don't know what's happening. And yesterday I didn't even work on it at all. Clearly, I'm not humble. Clearly, this associate of mine is making me prideful and I'm not receiving revelation. I'm definitely saying a prayer after I turn the camera off. Okay. Often when the scriptures talk about a softening of the heart, they refer to a pushing aside of pride, a willingness to submit our will to the Lord's. The ultimate expression of humility is to acknowledge God's divine perfections as being so infinitely superior to our own attributes that we, of our own free will, surrender our hearts to him. As Abinadi noted, in the Savior we have the perfect model for humility, for the will of the Son was swallowed up in the will of the Father. Note how the Lord values this attribute, especially how often he links it directly to an increase in revelation. Be thou humble, and the Lord thy God shall lead thee by the hand and give thee answer to thy prayers. They did fast and pray oft, and did wax stronger and stronger in their humility, yielding their hearts unto God. Because of meekness and lowliness of heart cometh the visitation of the Holy Ghost. Walk in the meekness of the Spirit, and you shall have peace in me. Definitely need to repent. Definitely need to pray for compassion for him. Just pray for compassion. The thing, the thing of it is, is that I don't hate him. I don't, like, we get along fine. Yesterday we talked, you know, had some really good conversations and like, he does say funny things and he makes me laugh, but then... He does things that makes my job harder. If, if we, if he didn't work for me, everything would be perfectly fine. But because he works for me, his actions make my life difficult. And that's where it comes from. All right. I'm going to repent. I'm going to ask to develop some compassion for him. Love and understanding, because I need some revelation. Okay, my my plans, okay? The three things I want to try to work on, prayer, learning my covenants, and focusing on the names of Christ, what they mean and what they mean to me in my life. That's the plan. I was going through the list of the names of Christ, um, and... Some of them, I just, <clears throat> I broke them up into categories. So like, um, God, anything that has God. So God, Holy God, um, the Lord God, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's like the God of Israel, you know, all, anything that says God is one. I don't know how deep or intimate or, um, how, how, how close I'm going to get to the savior. 
by studying the name, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Maybe because I am of the lineage, yes, but, you know, there's, um, what's another one? Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, um, the Lord Jesus Christ, all those. I'm thinking maybe I don't break them into categories, 24 categories. I think maybe I pick out the names that I think would be applicable to me and my life, things that I think would benefit my life if I studied those and how he is those things to me. So that's what I think I'm going to do there. I, I want more, what's the word? I want more, uh, you know me, I gather all the information and then, you know, so I, I want to try to find conference talks that have to do with that. I, I don't know. It's all very jumbled right now in my head, clearly because my pride and my anger is so, but it's all very jumbled in my head. And I, I'm trying to work out a plan and I keep praying that he would help me in my plan. I'm like, you know, I like my plans. I like my plans and my schedules and help me with those. So we'll see how that comes along. Um, I don't, so far, the names of Christ are the only thing I'm focusing on right now. Um, it's really hard to come up with a plan for the next six months when you have a week and you're also working and you've also got life. And so anyways, okay, I'll stop talking now. What's today? Today is Wednesday. General conference talk day. Should we do that? Should we do a general conference talk? Um, yeah, why not? President Nelson said to study these talks from the conference repeatedly. So let's do that. Let's start at the top. Um, I don't know how many talks there are, but first one is Jeffrey. So let's listen to Jeffrey. All right, let's end it with a read it, do it. It is April 10th. Jacob chapter 5, verses 40 through 57. They highlight verse 49. In these verses, the Lord weeps over the vineyard and asks, What could I have done more? For I have done all. Spend some time thinking about all the Lord has done for you. Not bad. Okay, that's all for today. That was Jacob chapter 5, verses 31 through 46. Tomorrow we do 47 through 61. We will see you then. Bye.